Okay, so let's keep moving and think about these stresses. So let's actually, let me go back one. So let's just look and let's just pull out the shear stresses here and ignore these normal stresses. Or we effectively can say that those, those normal stresses are equal to zero. And then that can, can be a, a way for us to look at a particular solution here. So let's just look at those shear stresses. Whenever we have a force like this operating, we can of course always define it in another coordinate system. So imagine that we had our initial coordinate system, sigma x and y, or sorry, x and y, something like that. And let's say that we wanted to look in a different coordinate system because we wanted to define the stresses in that different coordinate system. So we're going to rotate by 45 degrees, right? In this case, we're going to rotate counterclockwise. We're going to define positive rotations, positive rotations are defined as counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. Once again, this is just all part of making sure that our right-hand rule and sign conventions stay solid. Okay? We're going to, in fact, define this rotation. This rotation is about Z, which points right out at you. We're going to define this rotation by my favorite notation as phi or phi sub 1. Okay? Lowercase Greek letter phi, which looks like a circle with a a spike through it, one, and that's this one also goes this way. The new axes we get, we're going to call x prime, and we're going to call them y prime, the axes we get by rotation. I probably made this one too long. It should actually only go to here. Okay. So let me grab something here. I used to have an eraser. Anyways. Um, Okay, so we're going to rotate that by 45 degrees. We're going to rotate to a new coordinate system. The new coordinate system is like this, where this is x prime and y prime. Okay, and we're going to look at the components of these forces that act on these. So, so if you look on this, this axis, right? If we look on this axis, this force gives us a component on that axis, right? This force also gives us a component on that axis. This force gives us a negative component in the negative direction right here. And a this one gives us a negative component right here. Turns out if you add those together, it looks like these forces, right, would act to pull or extend this this way. Right? Now, this force also acts on the new y-axis. Right? In fact, it's going to act on the component of the y. It's going to have a y component y prime component, right, that goes like this. This one has a y prime component that goes like this. And it looks like we end up with forces pushing like this. Right? So, so it looks like this is being stretched in this dimension and squoze in this dimension, right? In fact, we can rotate our element, so we rotate our little square to correspond to that, and that means that we would expect a force going this way and a force going this way force going this way and a force going this way, we would have tension in this direction and we would have compression along this axis. Now, all we did was rotate the coordinate systems and take the components of the forces, so that means this is the same stress state as is this stress state, it's just that they're expressed in two different coordinate systems. To get this result actual in actuality, we would want to go through what's called a tensor rotation. Okay. In this particular tensor rotation, what we've done is we've taken a shear stress, and we can just write it as sigma and sigma in those two positions. Right? So zero in all those places, and a sigma here in the xy position. A sigma here, I'm sorry. A sigma here in the xy position, and a sigma here in the yx position, or the 1, 2, and the 2, 1 position. Right? And what happens after that rotation is the new value, the sigma prime value, right? We end up in the x direction with a positive value, and the y direction we end up with a negative value, and still zero in the z direction, and we end up with zeros in all of these positions. This particular stress state 
is a stress state called pure shear. Right? And this expression for it and this expression for it express the same thing. It's just that there is this 45 degree rotation that's represented between the two. Second rank tensors. This is the generic version of it. T bolded or TIJ, either one, as long as we know what it is. And there's lots of notation varieties. That's the standard form or version of what we expect to see for one of these, okay? For the three by three. Always remembering that we want to have right-handed coordinate systems. Okay.